Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Is it possible to manifest a partner out of thin air? Okay, like if you have the mindset of if you think it will happen or if you put it into the universe, it's going to appear and it's going to manifest. But do you have you really do have to be intentional? Like it's not just this thing you say, oh, it's going to happen. Um, and and it's not something also that happens just because you say it. And of course, you can apply this at your love life manifested as a belief that you can intentionally create your reality through beliefs or pattern actions to attract the partner of your dreams. Now, manifestation is essentially like taking a more intentional approach to life. That's how I look at it. You know, you look at behaviors, action, belief systems in your life, and then you ask yourself, does this serve the reality that I'm trying to create? And manifestation is the act of bringing something into your life through attraction and belief. And the key is believing in what you may have ruled out previously or thought was impossible. And I've seen this happen a lot with people who say, you know, oh, I don't have a man or I don't have a woman. There's no one good enough for me. No one's out there. And and here's the thing, whether it's conscious or unconscious, the more you believe something to be true, like you're worthy of a healthy reciprocal and great partnership, the more you behave that way, which then attracts more of what you want. Now, of course, this can happen in the opposite sense, in a negative way. So if you think you're never going to find love or there are no good men or women out there for you, then guess what? You'll make yourself right. The key is to believe wholly, fully, completely in that belief so that you have fully embodied it, even to the point of what you wear, how you carry yourself and move through life will create something magical for you. It's like acting as if. That's why I love starting from the outside in, because even when you wear certain clothes, it's a a manifestation of the persona that you want to be. You know, it's a really crucial step in manifesting the life and the love that you desire and gaining clarity in what you want. But how becomes the question. I just I am coming off of a high, actually, because I I had my um, six month program have a graduation and there were a bunch of men and women in there. And some have found love, some found success within themselves. Some are dating up a storm. But this one woman who found a relationship in the very beginning of the program, she said, I don't see any good men out there. The men that I see are not good and I'm about to give up. And I mean, literally she had her boxing gloves on and I really had to fight her and getting her to in to believing that there are good men out there. But again, she had to be something different and see something different in order to attract that. And as she started doing the program, she was realizing that the men that she was seeing and attracted to were the bad boys, the ones that weren't so good for her. And she was getting caught up in the shiny object and not really taking a look at the inside of what that guy could bring. And so She did date a couple people. She started like just flirting and having fun with everyone. That's like my motto with everyone. And she started seeing a different pattern. And in that process, she started believing. And lo and behold, there was this guy that came across her app. And it's a guy that she would never say yes to, you know, before the program. And she had me in her head and said, okay, Kimmy's going to kill me if I swipe left on her. Him. I'm going to give him a chance. So she did. And she went out with him and it was like a fine wine. He just started growing on her. And now they are in a full blown relationship and it's like the healthiest relationship she's ever been in. And, you know, in that graduation weekend, she said, you know, I was just kind of in the belief that people just kind of stumble upon love. Like some people are lucky, some people are not, but she realized through the program how powerful she really was. Cause I said, you're the one that created 
yourself and attracted that. You manifested that guy because you chose to see it. And then you kind of went against your type. And now, you know, she realized, wow, I, I didn't realize that I had the power to do that. And so it was a really big lesson. It's a beautiful story. And this can happen to anybody. Manifestation involves internalizing new beliefs, which means it doesn't happen overnight. So with me today is someone very special to me. She's a friend and an amazing person who has embodied manifestation, in my opinion, with both her career and her love life. She is a celebrity psychic who has been featured on BuzzFeed, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox. It goes on and on and on. I mean, I can't even name all the media she's done. She is a clairvoyant, a psychic medium, writer, actress, model, producer, writer, singer, speaker. What is it that she is not? Like, she's just everything. But more importantly, she's just like an amazing human being. She's the author of seven books. She also hosts a podcast, Healing Powers Podcast, in which she interviews experts on healing, metaphysical, and spiritual topics. Welcome, Laura Michelle Powers. Oh, it is my pleasure. I always <laughs> love to connect with you. And manifesting love are definitely two topics I really adore. So I'm so happy to talk about this. I know. And then it's such a good time when we were like talking off line, like, you know, what topic, because there's so many directions we could go. You are so talented, but this notion of manifestation is, it's almost like mystic to a lot of people. And I, I, you know, I'd love for you to share. I know you've been on my podcast before, but for those of you who don't know you share your story of just like who you are and how you came into this. And then we can kind of get into the manifestation. Sure. And yeah, I mean, a lot has happened since I was on your podcast. I can't remember exactly when, but it's it's been years. So I know. You know, I'm continuing to use my manifesting mojo for lots of great things. So um, so I started out, uh, actually, I was born in France and was born into abusive situations. So I started in, you know, early childhood trauma, moved to the United States when I was a girl, didn't speak English, um, even though my mom's American, very much felt like an immigrant, felt like a fish out of water. It didn't feel like I fit in. Like my early childhood was definitely difficult, but, you know, I grew up, I, I got through it. And as I, I got older, I definitely was in the paradigm of, you know, life is hard struggle, the, what I call the very 3d world. Like you have to work hard to make things happen and everything's work. <laughs> and even with that paradigm, I still managed to gain some traction, but, you know, I remember I was, you know, working a management job, making like, you know, $36,000 a year working like 60 hours a week. Like it was rough. Like it was, I, I had to push for every single thing that I got. And then the recession happened and my whole life fell apart. I was in a really toxic marriage and I didn't realize it was so toxic until it, it, it fell apart and a bunch of things were revealed to me. The recession happened. I'd been working in a contract position for University of Washington. And normally, I think in a different economy, I would have then gotten a, a different position. Um, but they went into hiring freeze. I was unemployed. I was physically ill. I had so many things in my life that were just really, just frankly, a mess. And I went to a psychic to try to get help. And she basically explained to me how what I had abilities. And when I'd shut them out, I stopped my intuition as well, which really made okay. sense. So I set about the process of opening back up psychically. And it was through that journey that I started to learn about conscious manifesting. And I, what I realized was that most of my life, I had been unconsciously manifesting difficulty and struggle. And as soon as I made that switch and decided something different was possible, it was shocking how fast things shifted. So I just want everyone to know it just doesn't have to take a long time and it can be incredible what starts to come in for you. Like within the period of a year, I had shifted so much that it was almost unbelievable to me. Like if I hadn't experienced it, I would have been shocked. Um, and since then I've continued to use those tools to manifest, you know, incredible life. Like you and I were just chatting again before the recording about how, like, I was just traveling for six weeks at a time, you know, staying at like five-star gorgeous resorts. And I, you know, I just like, my life is pretty epic, honestly. <laughs> it is. And I just really do what I want to. I run my business around all of this. Um, I have so many wonderful, loving people in my life. My clients are amazing. So whatever low that you're in. So in my case, it was coming from trauma and abuse, being at a toxic uh, marriage, 
being unemployed and being physically ill to, you know, the, my wonderfully different lifestyle <laughs> that I have right now, it's all possible. It's so amazing. And what's really incredible about your stories, because I know like there'd be a lot of people listening who have experienced trauma and it feels like quicksand, like you're never going to get out of it, you know? And so I'm just curious if you could share, like, what was that moment where you were able to pull yourself out? And are there any like tricks to doing that where you switch from like that negative manifestation to the positive? So yeah, there's a couple of things I'll say. One is I, I'm a big advocate of asking angels and for divine support. So I believe in angels. I've you know written several books about them. You know whatever your spiritual beliefs are, though, ask God, ask angels, ask your ancestors. You know just ask for help from the divine you know, spiritual universe and then see what comes in. And the other piece is switching from a place of like possibility from fear instead of fear. Cause fear, mm. it, it cripples you. Fear oh. will stop you from every single good thing that the world has to offer you. So once I started calling on angels and I started to receive intuitive insights and I started to act on those, whereas I think in the past, I would have let the fear programming take over. And I wouldn't have taken those steps that actually would have led to the answer to my prayers and manifestations. And so there's so many examples of that in my life. I can look back to now and I think, okay, instead of operating out of the fear-based programming, I decided to go on hope and faith and my intuition. And that's when the magic happens. I love that too, that you're, it's almost like I have this vision of like when you're saying angels, right. And then the fear is almost like a gremlin. Like it, yes. it's like these entities that are just like hovering and you could like look in one direction or another and, and it's what you do with it is what is the power, right? Cause a lot of people will say, well, I have no control over it. You know, like some people are just fortunate or some people are just doomed, you know, like I hear this a lot. So how do you like, how do you take that ownership, you know, of whether it is the the gremlin or the angel? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're constantly making these choices. And honestly, my divorce and everything that happened was really a catalyst for me. Like there was an actual counselor I went to when I just found out how bad things were in my marriage, I had some shocking realizations. And he would not let me play the victim. He actually said to me, Laura, on some level, you must have known something was going on, you know, and, and, uh, I wanted to say no, kind of fuck you. Part of my brain. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did everything perfect and you know, whatever, but I couldn't, I couldn't let myself just kind of get out of that scot-free. And it was like, yes, God, you're right. Now the beauty of taking ownership of wherever you are today is that if you have played a part in where you are, you can also play a part in shifting it. So for me, it was taking responsibility and not allowing myself to go into mental victimhood because we've all had traumatic things happen to us. And there's a big difference between actually being a victim, meaning having something bad happen to you versus mentally like having the mantle of a victim, thinking of totally. yourself as a victim. And Thinking of yourself as a victim is a very disempowered state. So I believe we we always have that choice, which, which one we're choosing. And the beauty of the world is the more that we choose that faith, that hope, um, the more that we get things that reflect that. Like you said, whatever we believe is reflected. And what the angels and guides showed me very clearly was this analogy of a Netflix queue. And I love this because it's so easy to relate to that the, whatever we choose, the universe sends us more kind of like whatever we watch on Netflix, we get more of that in our queue as a suggestion. Mm -hmm. So the world literally changes be before our eyes as we make different choices. Yeah. Well, and also like, as you're talking, do you, do you use a lot of visualization with that? Like, do you actually see yourself as like a certain person or what you're obtaining? I mean, some people do and some people don't. I was just curious. Like for I you. do. I do. Um, I'm also uh, very empathic. So for me, the feeling, like I think and feel of that energy, that emotion, like how it'll feel to be X, Y, Z. And, you know, you talked in your introduction about how important, you know, what you wear and how you present all of that is important. In fact, one of the thing, new ventures I'm doing is starting these kind of divine feminine goddess photo shoots, because I think when you put yourself into that physically, you start to feel that and then you embody that energetically. So 
it's, it's both like work from the inside and then work from the outside. But I think visualization, I think, you know, whatever that means for you, seeing it, feeling what that would be like, do that. And then the huge thing is boundaries. Um, you know, so much of our life is boundaries and what we allow and accept, just like that Netflix queue, you know, what are you choosing in your field every day? And then also who and what you're surrounding with, which is a part of boundaries, but also, you know, really making sure that you're connecting with inspiring, loving, positive people. And if you don't have that current capability in your physical circle, then do it online. Like there's, that's the beauty of masterminds and, you know, podcasts and things like that, because when you see people doing what you want to, it get, it's like there's this energetic blueprint that you're like, oh, I see that. I can have that. And it's much more easy to embody it once you've witnessed it and then energetically you feel it. It's so true. And it's so important. Like the people that you surround yourself with, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. And you know, like pertaining to your love life, especially like I'll talk to so many people or like, oh, my friends are like negative Nellies and they sit in the back of the restaurant and they just like talk about how much they hate men. It's like, well, guess what? Like, <laughs> then that's what you're manifesting, you know, is nothing, you know, and that all men are bad and that kind of thing. But if you, it's like an, the abundance mindset too, is what you're saying. It's both, both in money and love. I really believe that it applies. And so, um, cause I wanted to get into this a little bit about like how we can translate that into manifesting love and like, how did you apply that in your life? Oh, absolutely. But I also, I mean, I had to learn uh, more about healthy boundary love and sort of masculine feminine paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I've been learning more about recently. I feel like, especially for women, a lot of women are in very masculine energy as it relates to other areas of manifesting, you know, work, kind of career, just life in general. Um, and, and then they're trying to apply that process to love. And actually that will repel frequently the type of love that they're wanting. <laughs> and so that, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, that's a, that's an area that I feel like I've had to educate myself on because each life area has different elements. Um, but I think so much of this is about balancing and being in your own masculine and feminine energy in healthy ways. For example, in certain types of manifesting, I think physical action is very important. So uh, some mm -hmm. people try to manifest just sitting at home and not doing any action steps. Like, I think it is important to get on apps or go out on, you know, do the Thank things you. you want love, right? <laughs> it's not yeah. just about like, I'm just going to will it into being. A lot of times we help manifest our dreams through the guided intuitive action steps that we're, you know, getting to take. Um, but we also can be so much in masculine energy and love that we're not even allowing someone else to, to have that masculine place in our lives. So I think it's complex, but again, I've had to learn and take classes and everything to, to help understand that as well. No, it, it, to your point, I'll never forget there was a woman that I was working with. I mean, this happens a lot, you know, where people can't really see themselves and they think they're taking action by, you know, doing talking therapy or listening to podcasts. And by the way, continue to listen to podcasts. But, you know, m the point is, is that there wasn't a lot of action that she was doing in conjunction with those things because those things were great. And she she came to me, she's like, I don't understand. Like, I am doing the work. And still yet nothing is happening. And so we did an intensive together and we went out into the field. And then I saw exactly what you were talking about that was going on. Like she had the resting bitch face on. She had like her arms crossed. She really didn't look at look like she was open, you know, to meeting a man. And half the battle is putting yourself out there, but also inviting that in, right? It's not it's not enough to just like stand there and be like, all right, where's my man? How are you using your energy to invite that? And it was a big lesson for her because like you were saying, she was in a masculine world. You know, she was like a CEO of her company and she was used to just like kind of going after things. Right. And she's like, where, where's the man? Where's the man? Like she was, <laughs> okay, let's lean back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And instead of like going after it, receive it. And that's like 
I think some of the things you're talking about with the feminine and the masculine energy. And it was like a huge wake up call. And after that, like it shook her because from that moment on, she started moving through life a lot differently and she started talking to everyone. And eventually she did find a great guy, but it, you're so right. Like it, it's not enough to just say, okay, I'm just, I'm going to close my eyes and manifest and poof, the guy will be here or the girl will be here. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a combination of, you know, the energy aspect, your mindset, but also taking a get aligned, what I say is aligned or divinely guided action. And the other thing is not giving up because oh, I yeah. see a lot of women. I talk to women who they had a bad dating experience and they're like, I'm done. I'm over it. I'm off the apps. I'm off. I'm not going to try. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we have, it's a learning curve, right? So maybe we learn, okay, that that particular, there's something about that person, like they did something that's a no, or we just, there's something about it. So every single time I've had a bad dating experience, there was something for me to learn. And then I inserted a boundary for that. Um, so for example, every time a child works to walk on average, they fall 17 and a half times a day. Oh my God. I love this metaphor. Yeah. Right? So right. but it, it, they don't just say, forget it. Walking yeah. up for me. I'm just going to crawl my whole life. No, I mean, like, don't give up. And that's the, how I am about all the things I want to create in my life. I'm like, I'm not going to give up until I get there. And, and you can still be in feminine energy about some of these things, but also just not give up. Right. Cause giving up to me is like victim energy. And that is just well, it's, it's self-defeating. It's a uh, non-productive <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Well, and using that metaphor, if you think about it, if the kid is not trying over and over and over again, and every time he falls down, he gets back up, he's never going to learn and he'll continue to crawl if he doesn't do it in repetition. So that's the other thing about not giving right. up. And the other thing about kids is that they're not fearful, like, especially like before the age four, they're just, it, it's almost like they're, they're just like dolls, you know, they fall down, they're like, whoop up, they don't say, oh, I better not try that again, because I'll fall again. They don't have that critical thinking yet. So as adults, we have filters that start going on, right? And that's where the fear comes in, like you were saying in the beginning, and why we stop. So I, I think that's so important. I'm really glad you you brought that up. I was, yeah. yeah. I just want to quickly say, it's like, yeah, the kids don't have the story in their mind about right. that scenario. Right. So I've heard many women talk about, they went on it, like what they describe as a terrible date. And I'm not saying those things aren't terrible. Don't get me wrong. And then they're like, that's it. I'm done. Okay. So yes. wait, like you've made a story in your mind about all that meaning something you're bad at dating. There's no good men, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of like, Oh, okay, what were the red flags or what did I miss in this person's, you know, how can I prevent that same scenario playing out? And then going, okay, like now you put yourself back out there and then you try again <laughs> until you succeed. Totally. It is. It's more of that positive mindset and seeing the gifts rather than it being like this horrible thing that's like rejection or, you know, taking it like, oh my God, I can never do it again. And that's the thing as well as that if you can almost, and I don't know if you do this in manifestation, but I wonder also by just relabeling things or renaming things in a positive way. So instead of saying, oh my God, I had the worst date, I give up, say, wow, that was a really bad date. And I'm so happy I didn't spend more time with that guy. Like, I don't want a guy like that, you know, like whatever it is. And then look at how that can help you in the future rather than hurt you. Yeah. And instead of making the story like I'm bad at dating or there's no good men out there, I'd be like, okay, like what was it in this situation that I could have done differently? So I'll think of a couple of examples. In one case, you know, actually my first online date that I went after I ended my last um, long-term relationship, I showed up and the guy was like 10 to 12 years older than his pictures and <laughs> 40 to 50 pounds heavier. Like he was a completely different person than the person that I thought I was having a date with. And I, for, at first I was like, should I even just like walk away at this point? But I was like, okay, we'll just have a date and like, you know, have an evening or whatever. But it, from that point on, I learned, okay, so if th this man is 
older than a certain age, I'm going to ask how recent are your photos or, you know, can we do a FaceTime or something? So it's just a learning curve, right? Like with anything, there's a learning curve. So if we can figure out like, okay, what, what are the steps I can take to improve it? Then that is going to help things, you know, much better. I, I just, uh, this conversation is so incredibly important because, you know, you could do all these things, like put yourself out there, swipe right and left, say I'm dating. But if you don't have that like mindset, because that's what we're really talking about with manifestation. It's having a certain mindset that, that, you know, deep inside that you deserve something that you really want to, Right. You deserve it and you can have it. And what, you know, it's just when it's a no, it's just, you're just getting one step closer to that, you know, one more fall closer to actual walking <laughs> versus <laughs> right. like, this is never happening for me, you know? Um, I, and I also have shown that like, it's never too late for anything. I mean, even people have, you know, near death experiences where they literally die and then they come back and they heal their cancer or whatever. I mean, like literally it's just not too late. <laughs> It's so true. I wonder, do you do any rituals around manifestation, like for yourself with all these things that you've been attracting in your life? So I'm actually con considering um, writing a sort of journal manifesting book. I have a book that's on angels and manifesting, but this one would be more on like writing things down, like as a daily practice. So that is one of the things I do. It's not a ritual per se, but I'm consciously like every day being clear on what it is that I want to create and bring in. And the other thing I'll say is, you know, having awareness of gratitude, being in a place of yes. gratitude automatically brings you more. So whenever you're in that place of like, God, things just suck. <laughs> I mean, we have, we all have those, right. We're human. When you can just step back and just think, Oh my gosh, what am I grateful for today? I'm so grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my beautiful dress. I'm grateful for my best friend, whatever that is, you know, it, you cannot be in fear and gratitude at the same time. They're like opposite Ooh. energies. Um, so find things that confirm the positive aspects of life and then being that. And, oh, and it's like retraining your brain the more you do that. Um, but I have a daily practice of whether it's writing it down or just like even just taking a moment during the day and just like being like, wow, I'm so grateful for X, Y, Z. That makes a big difference. No, that's huge. You know what I have my clients do before a date is I'll, I'll tell them to create a date prep plan. And in that plan, they need to get into a state where they feel sexy, where they're letting go of their masculine energy if they're a woman, or even with a guy getting into more, you know, playful state rather than the serious business state, you know, anything that, because that will manifest that like date worthy energy and person when you go on a date. So like, that's why I think any kind of ritual that you do is so important. And, you know, with that, it's that belief in yourself too. I, I think that is huge. Absolutely. And joy, joy is so powerful. Right. And, you know, when something happens that isn't what you want, what if instead of getting upset, what if you just laugh at it? Like I literally, I mean, I literally laughed at that situation with that man because I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. Like he's presenting himself as not, oh, and it, it, it was even further than that because he he presented himself in the app as like a photographer, but it was turned out that he used to be a photographer, but now he's an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's his main thing, you know? Right. And it was just like, oh my gosh. Okay, such a learning curve, but I was able to laugh at the ridiculousness of all of that. So instead of crying, sometimes we can just laugh and then it totally shifts the energy. I love it. I love it. I know we have a short time together. I'm like, I want to keep going. So yes. what, any like parting words of wisdom or things you want to share and then like, let everyone know how they can find you. Yeah. So gosh, literally anything in your life is changeable. And there is one or many people out there for every single person, regardless of whatever you do not have to be like a supermodel. You know, you, you don't, you can be, and there's always a partner. There's always a match. Just believe that. Also, you can transform yourself. You know, it's it's totally up to you. Like when I was in my rough part of my life, I was 50 pounds heavier. I was physically ill. Like, wow. so whatever it is you want to shift, you can. I just want to say that anything's possible and just find confirmation that surround yourself with positive, inspiring, loving people and just don't stop until you achieve what you want to receive. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's and, awesome. 
And so that, thank you. And uh, yeah, my website, if anyone wants to connect with me, is healingpowers.net. I have a podcast, Healing Powers Podcast. And Kim, you're going to be a guest shortly on that one as well. So yeah, I love to connect with people. And I truly believe a rising tide lifts all shifts. So the better each of us individually are, the better we are as a collective. And I feel like there's a lot of this um, being in like healthy feminine energy, we're like all learning how to shift into that. So the more each of us is the better, you know, we all are as a society. Oh, Laura. Well, I'm manifesting a a girl's weekend soon with you and I, I love it. Let's do it. I'm so excited. (laughs) Maybe Cairo. I don't know. That sounds pretty cool. When you were saying that anyway, I adore you. Thank you so, so much and sharing your wisdom. And thank you for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you want to manifest the love you desire and want help crystallizing that vision, and I really believe that you can do it, just like Laura was saying, anyone can do it. Anyone can have anything they want. Just hop on a call with me to map out a strategy and I will help you. Just click the link you see in the show notes. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.